And now Ivanchuk played a very curious move. Queen to h3. Pinning the f5 pawn, so of course if pawn takes pawn, then queen takes bishop. However, this pin is very easy to break, and it seems as though white only wastes time with this manoeuvre. Rook f7 came. There's no need to deal with the pin yet. Rook f e1, supporting the pawn. Queen e8, defending the bishop so that now f takes e4 is a threat. Queen h4. And now a very powerful little move. Queen to f8. I really like Kasparov's manoeuvring over the next few moves. That's just building up some pressure along the f-file. One thing to note is how the black rooks are cleverly placed so that they control many of the squares that the knights could move to. For instance, the knight on a5 simply can't move forwards. It's completely out on a limb. Here, Ivanchuk captured on f5. Then came bishop takes f5 and f3, so that the white queen can now retreat back to safety. Now the bishops really started to prove their worth here. Bishop c2, which actually forces the white rook back into the corner, rook to a1. Well, I think this is more a move uh, of psychological worth than anything else, because Kasparov retreated the bishop straight away. And now, instead of repeating the position with rook to d1, I'm after which I'm sure Kasparov would have varied. I don't think he'd have taken the draw here. Instead, Ivanchuk played h3. This pawn move looks fairly inconspicuous and innocuous, but it proved to be a fatal weakness later on. Now we have a lovely bit of regrouping from Kasparov. Queen to e8. Queen came back to f2. Queen to e6, the rook came back to d1, queen g6, so the queen has moved to a much more powerful square. It's supporting the bishop on f5 and looking down at white's king. The threat, of course, is bishop takes h3, so Ivanchuk moved the king to the corner. Now rook to f8, just look at Kasparov's position, it's a, it's a picture, it's, a, it's just poetry, I love it. The two bishops raking across the position. The, the queen on g6, lovely position, and the black rooks doubled on the f-file. It's just a glorious position. Black already has several nasty threats in this position. One possibility which Kasparov must have been eyeing, and certainly Ivanchuk was, must have been bishop takes h3, and after pawn takes bishop, rook takes pawn on f3, initiating a really powerful attack. In view of that, Ivanchuk played the desperate h4. I mean, this, this is such a horrible move. It weakens the king position terribly. And here Kasparov produced threat number two. He played bishop c2. Once again, that bishop flying down, attacking the rook. And Ivanchuk felt he had to give up the exchange. For if rook to a1, then we have the really cunning move, bishop to e4. Now this bishop can't be captured, rook takes bishop, because of queen takes rook, and if pawn takes queen, rook takes queen, black would be the exchange up. The bishop attacks the knight on d5. Now, if the knight retreats, then black slams in with rook takes f3. This is great stuff. Pawn takes rook, and then the second rook comes down. Rook takes f3 with a winning attack. That bishop on e4, rook on f3, there's going to be a horrific discovered attack. That's the end of the game. 
And now Ivancho completely fell apart. He played rook to d2. So Kasparov just captured. Bishop takes d2. Queen takes d2. And now a lovely move. Instead of retreating the bishop, Kasparov kept the initiative. He kept on attacking. He played the queen into g3. Great move. Of course, queen takes bishop. We met by queen takes rook. In the meantime, there's a threat of queen takes h4 check. And I have a funny feeling that these rooks are going to crash, crash through at any moment with rook takes f3. Or maybe pawn to e4, breaking open a line. Ivanchuk was distraught. And in this position, he played the desperate knight to b7. It finally got into a good square. But unfortunately, Gaza just took it off. And that was that. Ivanchuk resigned immediately. By any standards, this was a brilliant performance from Kasparov. But at speed chess, well, there was something else. Fantastic stuff. Gary Kasparov leading one game to nothing, really putting it on his opponent, Vasily Ivanchuk. And look at Ivanchuk. He's removed his tie and rolled up the sleeves. Boy, he's ready to come out fighting. So, Ivanchuk had to win game two. But with the black pieces against the world champion, this was never going to be an easy task. But if anyone can do it, then it's our Chucky. And he started off with a really weird opening to try and confuse Kasparov. Kasparov played his pawn to d4. And Ivanchuk played d5. Very solid indeed. Kasparov played the Queen's Gambit. And now we see Ivanchuk's idea. He played knight c6. Now this is the Chigorin defence, named after Mikhail Chigorin, 19th century Russian player, arguably the founder of the Russian school of chess. This is very unusual at top grandmaster level. But Morozevich had played this against Ivanchuk earlier in the day, so Ivanchuk must have been preparing against it and thought, well, I'll give it a try against Kasparov. So, you know, I'm, I may as well gamble. Kasparov captured. Pawn takes pawn. Queen takes d5. Now he played e3. Looks quite modest, but there's an interesting idea behind it. e5. Knight c3. Bishop b4. Now bishop d2. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Kasparov takes Kasparov taking off his jacket already. Usually, you know, just when the heat's uh, getting to him on the on the stage, because he takes his jacket off just when he says, "All right, all right, no monkey business." Now I'm ready to start thinking about this position, and he's taking it off early because Ivanchik has made it clear that he wants to imbalance the position at all costs. It's not an easy thing to have to beat the best player in the world with the black pieces on order. So here Ivanchuk with a decision to surprise Kasparov. All Kasparov needs is a draw and you can bet that he will play for it the moment the draw pops up. Now we have a position which is very similar to a kind of Nimzo Indian except that Kasparov hasn't played the knight out to f3 yet which means he can use his center pawns with f3 and e4 later on. This was his idea. Queen d6 You look at Ivanchuk's face, Danny. I mean, he looks like he's just in this. He knows his life is at stake, at least on the chessboard that's it's right in front of him. It means some history to be made. He could defeat the world champion. And this is the first time that they've ever played in a Grand Prix event. And he has won two of these competitions. Kasparov has only won one. So if Kasparov wins this, he evens it up and starts to strut his stuff. He, w he would have won two of the last three big events. So this is really... He really knows that his work's cut out for him. Bishop d3. Knight f6. f3. That's the point. White has greater central control by leaving the knight on g1 in this position so that he can play the pawn to f3. Ivanchuk castled. Knight e2. Bishop e6. White castled. Rook ad8. 
Now, Kasparov's problem in this position is that he would like to advance his centre pawns with e4, d5, etc. But of course, if e4 in this position, then pawn takes d4, and that wins a pawn. As well as that, White must be wary of possible problems with the bishops and the queen lined up on the d-file. There could be some tactical tricks. So for that reason, Kasparov nudged his queen over to c1. I think that's a very astute move tactically. Ivanchuk swung the knight round to d7. I think his idea was to play the knight to b6 to try and put a piece on the c4 square. Kasparov continued his policy of clearing the pieces from the d-file. Played his bishop back to e1. Now this is an excellent move. The bishop has two possibilities here. Perhaps it might end up on f2 to support an advance of the pawns in the centre. Note the bishop on f2 protects the pawn on d4. The other possibility is that the bishop will come to g3. Now that's a very nasty move. Looking at the pawn on e5 and through it the black queen on d6. Ivanchuk retreated the queen to e7, but now Kasparov discovered that he could play the queen to b1, threatening two pawns. Pawn on h7, as well as a pawn on b7. And after this, the game is effectively over. Kasparov kept his head. After knight b6, he took the pawn on h7 check. Thank you very much. King h8. And the bishop came back to d3. So he's a pawn up and still has this really powerful centre. Knight came to a5. Fanchuk still looking at this c4 square, but one can't help feeling that this is a touch irrelevant in this position. Now came the central advance. Pawn to e4. Knight to c4. Now, no messing around. Pawn to f4. Gaza is going for the throat f6, now pawn to f5, bishop retreats to f7, there's no need to mess around here, rook to f3, just hitting the h-file, it's, it's just a winning attack, king g8, rook h3. The other thing about the rook on the third rank is that it defends a lot of important squares, the rook defends the e3 square as well as the bishop on d3. Tactically that could be very important. Ivanchuk captured the pawn on d4. Kasparov recaptured. Now, pawn to c5. Finally, Ivanchuk is hitting out at the centre. So Kasparov pushed the pawn. Now, Ivanchuk's idea was that his knights now have some squares. This e5 square is available for the knight to hop into. But it's all in vain, really, because Ivanchuk's king is just too insecure. Knight e5. Kasparov retreated the bishop to c2. Knight b c4. Now this is a lovely move. Knight came into f4. The knight might end up on the e6 square, or maybe the g6 square, assisting in a checkmate that... Uh, it's, it's lovely, a lovely position for the knight on f4. b5. Now a great move from Kasparov, quite simple really. Very brutal idea. Queen b3, the simple idea of queen g3, queen h4, queen h8 mate. Queen to b3, now he's going to just slide over to the g3 square, jimmy up to h4 and slam dump the king with queen to h8 check mate. So, boy, Ivanchuk looking very busted here. That h pawn, talk about blowing an artery. The blood's pouring out. Kasparov coming in. Man, this is just, this is just slaughter. Knight g4. And queen to g3. There's nothing that Chucky can do to prevent this. He tried knight c to e5 so that now if queen h4 then knight h6 will defend just for a move or two however 
Akbar found bishop d1, which wins the knight on g4. The knight has no safe square to go to. Knight e3, queen takes e3, and if knight h6, then rook takes h6. Very simple. So in this position, with the knight on g4, attacked by the bishop on d1, if Lanchuk was it. With this terrific victory, Kasparov had laid a few ghosts to rest. As soon as it was all over, he reflected on his performance in the tournament, and firstly, his brutal demolition of Ivanchuk. The first game was uh, quite tough, but I, I played very well. I, um, you know, it was very slow maneuvering, and uh, White was slightly better, but uh, I think even covers to make his position, he just put his knight in awkward uh, place on a5, and... Uh, and uh, he just discovered at one point that he was completely outplayed because he accomplished nothing on that part of the, of, of the board, on the queen, on queen side. And all black pieces slowly concentrated on the king side. And uh, uh, at one point, you know, his position was absolutely lost. Okay, that's it. it was agony to play h4, but what else he can do? And in the second game, uh, he was too nervous to give this pawn? Or? Yeah, but the second game, you know, when uh, in the matches of that level, you know, somebody wins with black the first game, I mean, you can hardly expect uh, 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 your opponent to come back with black. And, uh, and I played solid. I didn't uh, have a, an advantage in the opening, but white was probably slightly better. And also, I, you know, I controlled the position. And um, he lost his, his temper at one point. What about this uh, semi-final against Kamni? Tell us quickly uh, what mm, happened. I think it was a good match. I played well. I, like very much the first game, probably you know I had good chances, winning chance, and also at the, at the end that uh, we looked at, even at the end when I offered a draw, I mean I still had some good winning chances, and in the second game I was absolutely winning, and it's, for me it was important that uh, uh, I um, reached these winning positions or better positions without uh, any opening preparation, just I played a line and, and just an opening. Uh, and yes, and uh, 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 in the second game, yeah, it's. Uh, it was, well, it was almost a disaster because it's from winning position, which I could win by force, I went to a very dangerous position, which I had to save with some tricks. And uh, then we had this blitz game. And, uh, okay, I was lucky. But Does this victory in uh, New York will uh, make you decide to play in London, finally? Uh, no, it, it doesn't change any of my decisions because, as I said, I would... Uh, uh, decide later, and that's, uh, the decision will be based on my, you know, preparation and and, uh, and my plans just before the match. But what's important for me now that even not, even if I decide not to play in London, I already guaranteed myself a seating number in Paris. But you are <laughs> you are very well placed in this Grand Prix now. You are second behind just behind. Okay, you. still, you know, if I don't play in London, I have my only chance of winning Grand Prix to win Paris. And that, that's, but okay, Paris is, was always a lucky ground for me. And again, what's important now, I'm in, this, I'm in the clear second position behind Ivan Chuk, and it's winning Paris, I could, I could win the total event, and that's, that makes me feel very good. And can such a victory in quick games give you uh, psychologically a good uh, mood for playing uh, against Anand? Or yeah, is it completely absolutely, no, absolutely, because uh, I always felt vulnerable in speed chess, you know, I couldn't win convincingly. You know, one event. Okay, Paris was good, but also I had problems with Kramnik, if you remember. And uh, uh, here I, you know, I'm very, very happy. You know, uh, because I, um, I proved that you know, even in this kind of chess, you know, my chess knowledge, my chess intuition, and 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 uh, 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 positional understanding matters. And against Ivan Chuk, is it a decisive blow is it psychologically? This victory? No, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, uh, Okay, I expected it would be a fight, but I was absolutely quiet because when I beat Kromnik, you know, it's... I mean, I went to the final not to lose, you know, when I just... I had a very strong opposition, I had Mickey Adams, okay, the Furman was not that tough, but still. And then I had Kromnik, I just, when you win such a match, you don't lose in the final, that's I know for sure. <laughs>